So it used to be that whenever I would start seeds, I'd do what everyone did and I'd start them in pots. But I'm gonna show you what I do instead that saves me a ton of money. I no longer have to spend money on these and it actually benefits the plants. So you'll notice I have a whole bunch of soil here in these wooden trays. And what these are is these are what's called soil blocks. So they are compacted soil in the shape of a cube. And then there's a little hole in the top where you put the seed. Really, really simple. It's not super expensive. Typically what you have issues with if you're starting your seeds in a pot like this is seeds will get root, can get root bound or you deal with things like transplant shock. With soil blocks, that is less likely to happen. They won't get root bound once the roots reach the outside layer and they hit it and if they go past it, they hit air, they stop growing. They don't keep growing around itself and suffocating itself. So that's another benefit. And of course, transplant shock because there is no pot to pull it out of you pretty much don't really have any transplant shock. So I actually need to start some seeds. I've just transplanted our green beans out to the garden and I need to get more seeds started um, for something else, probably tomatoes, I don't know yet. So what I've got here is I've got my soil. Now you could use any seed starting soil mix that you like, whether it's a store-bought, um, it's very common to make your own. The best thing to use is something called coconut core. It's a, renew a renewable sort resource and it's great. For, it's a great growing medium. I haven't got to that point yet. I'm still using, I had peat moss from previous years that I haven't used. And I'm going to go ahead and use it up, but I'm actually switching out of peat moss because it is not uh, a good medium, not for the sake of the plants. That's not the case. It is for the renewable resource aspect of it, the way they harvest it, it's very destructive to the ecosystem. So I'm actually switching out of peat moss, even though it is much more affordable, it's cheaper, it's really not good for the environment. So there's a lot of, you'll hear a lot of uh, controversy in peat moss. I didn't know that at the time, I was still learning, but I'm not gonna throw it away just because it's controversial. I have it, I'm gonna use. So compost um i don't know if you don't want to grow in pure compost i think i've done it in pure compost before and had no issues gives the seeds a really good boost but you do want perlite or there's another one i can't remember exactly but it's the little the little white you'll see in here the little white because you want some you want air pockets and such that helps with that so we're gonna go ahead and start getting the soil I have a tray that I'm going to use. You're gonna to wanna to have your own little mix set aside. Okay, so got some soil. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some water to it. You don't wanna to add too much. You wanna get an oatmeal consistency. It's good and saturated, but not like standing water. So add some a little bit at a time and keep mixing it so that you can keep tabs on that. All right, so that's got a pretty good, and for a test, you wanna squeeze it, and if it holds its shape, that's perfect. So this is the tool you are going to need. It is called a soil blocker. They're relatively inexpensive. You can get them online. I'll leave a link down below that you guys can find it easily, but this is a soil blocker. It probably runs, I think I got mine for like 20 or $25, but they come in all different varieties. I will leave you a link to the one that I have because they have different sizes, different amounts, different, um, they have like different little plugs and such, and they'll come with a kit with a uh, all those different things but they have sizes this one is i believe a one and a half inch soil blocker but we're gonna go ahead and get started i'm gonna show you guys how to use it really really easy what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of press it in and you really want to press and then pack more in you really want to get it compacted in this is what's going to help it keep its form so you see the water coming out the top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually hold this. I'm gonna press down with the handle. That's gonna help express some of that water. And you got soil here. And then you just take it, pull this handle up, and boom. 
small blocks. You can oversaturate these and they will crumble. It's either they're too dry or they're too wet. You want to find that sweet spot. That's when they will hold their shape is when they are just moist enough that they get compacted nicely. I uh, got 25 soil blocks ready to go, ready to plant. Pots can get expensive. And I've tried using the linen, it's like a, like a mesh planter, which have worked pretty good, but it costs money. With this, your only cost, of course up front is a soil blocker, but soil, which you're gonna have to pay for anyways, regardless if you do this or not. So I kind of like this the best. So we're gonna go ahead and get some seeds planted. Try and grow some peppers. These are older peppers, so we don't know if they're gonna germinate or not. We're gonna just drop a few in each one and see if we can get some. I would like to grow some peppers. I think I'm gonna plant some more ground cherries. Let's plant some more ground cherries. It'd be cool to have a couple rows of ground cherries. These seeds are so tiny. Another tip, please save yourself the trouble and get you one of these. I will leave a link down below. This thing is amazing. It does not fade in the sun. It does not wash away with the rain. You write it down and it is there. I don't label every single one. I just put them where they begin and I see, okay, all right, this is where those seeds begin. So I hope this video was helpful. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions at all. I'd be more than happy to answer if I can and help you in any way that I can. But this was something that I learned where it saved me quite a bit of money because like I said, those pots get expensive and I'd rather invest that money into good quality soil so that I can get strong, healthy seed starts for my garden. So thank you so much for stopping in.